أما بعد What is the importance of knowing and studying about groups and sects in Islam? This is a very important question that we have to look at. Why are there so many books out there that are written about the sects and the splitting in the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? This is something very important because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us that his community, the community of Muslims, would break into groups and sects, that we would be divided. However, we know we are ordered to be one, to be one hand. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَاَتَّسُمُوا بِهَبْلِ جِئِ قَالَ سُبْحَانَهُ وَاَتَّسُمُوا بِهَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَقُوا And hold on, all of you together, to the robe of Allah, and do not be divided. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders us to do. And that's what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ordered us to do. And he prophesied that we would follow those people who came before us and divide into groups and sects. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, If tarakatil Yahud ala ihta wa sab'in firqa, wa if tarakatil Nasara ala thinatain wa sab'in firqa, wa sa taftariku hadihi umma ala thalatha wa sab'in firqa, kullaha fin naar al wahid. قل من هي يا رسول الله قال من كان على مثل وما كان عليه وأصحابي اليوم. so the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said that the Jews would break into seventy one sects and the Christians into seventy two sects and my ummah my nation meaning the Muslims would break into seventy three sects all of them in the fire except one and the companions رضي الله تعالى عنهم أجمعين they said who are they يا رسول الله meaning those people who are saved from the hellfire those people who were not be in the hellfire and divide. Uh, who are they, Ya Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam responded by saying, those who are upon my sunnah and that of my companions. So that shows us that the ummah, the nation of Muslims, would break into groups and sects. So we, we were already aware of this. And anyone who lives in this time, uh, and of course the previous generations, there were many groups. Uh, starting with the early sects like the Khawarij. The Khawarij, uh, as the, the scholars uh, indicate, was one of the first groups to break away from the main Jama'at, from Ahl Sunnah al Jama'at, to break away from the Sahaba, to fight them and make takfir of them. And that was the, the Khawarij. And the Prophet وسلم, said about them, Hum Kilab al Nam, they are the dogs of the hellfire, those people who make takfir unjustly, without the right to do so, without the principles in the Wabit and Kuai. Then after them came the Shia, like the Rafida. The Rafida came later, but the Shia, as uh, they developed from Abdullah ibn Sabah, who was a Jew who pretended to become Muslim. And it is well known in the history books of the historians in Islam. And after them came groups like the Qadriya, those people who deny the Qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, 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 knows the divine destiny, is the one who destined things to happen, and, and that he has knowledge of everything, and he's the creator uh, of all things. So the Qadriya, they came along. Then after them, you had groups like the Jahmiya, who denied the, uh, the, the divine uh, attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, they say, uh, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Ar-Rahman ala ar that uh, the most merciful, he uh, ascends above his throne, he ascended above his throne. They deny that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they say he is Ar-Rahman without Rahman. He is the most merciful without mercy. So the Jahmiyyah, they actually, amongst their characteristics is that they negate the divine uh, attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then later you have the Asha'ira who do things like uh, distort the meanings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names and attributes. But let's look into, and, and then later on you had many other groups, you had before them the Muratazila, uh, then uh, many other groups and sects that, that broke away from the main body of Muslims. But we have to ask ourselves why. So the historians in Islam and those people who specialize in, the, in looking at the this concept of why the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam broke, they have uh, come up with a few, uh, amongst many reasons, 
but there's i'm just going to mention for four main ones the first the first reason not why forgive me we're not actually speaking about why we're going to speak about why it's important for us to study groups why is it important for us to study the groups and we're going to come up we're going to look at four main reasons the first one is الحذر من الأخطاء الفرق الضالة من باب معرفة الشر. So the first reason why we should study, especially students of knowledge and people who are calling to Islam, that they it's especially important for them to uh, to to know and be aware of the groups and the sects and their different beliefs and why they deviate from Ahl Sunnah. So the first reason is to warn against the mistakes. To warn against the mistakes of the misguided groups and sects, and this is from knowing, uh, from knowing uh, the evil. This is from knowing the evil, and it's also from commanding the good and forbidding the evil. So the first reason is to warn against evil. The reason we need to know is to warn against their mistakes, to warn against their evil, and be cautious of falling into what they uh, fell into and this is uh, this principle and this um, this principle is derived from the hadith of Hudayfa bin Yaman radiyallahu anhu who said kana an-nas yasaluna rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam al-khair wa kuntu as'aluhu an ash-shar mukhafatan an yudrikani so uh, Hudayfa bin Yaman radiyallahu anhu the companion of the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said, the people used to ask the Prophet, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, about the good. And I and I used to ask him about the evil. So in order, because I was fearful of falling into it, so he needed to know, as we should be aware uh, of evil, in order not to fall into it. That doesn't mean we need to study the nightclubs and we need to study this and we need to get so far I need to go to a Sufi vicar circle and turn off the lights and say Allahu Allah. That's not what it means. Or I need to go to the grave worshippers where they're worshipping the graves and, and really understand and empathize with them. No, that's not what it, what it means. But it's being aware of what is their beliefs, what are their most important books, and who are their, their scholars and, and their aqidah. So the first reason again, it's to know evil and to warn against evil and mistakes so that we would not fall into it and that the Ummah would not fall into it. The second reason uh, that it is important to study various groups and sects, to know about them, is Iqamat al-Hujjah al-Ahl al-Baqali wa da'watihim il al haq So the second reason is in order to uh, Establish the proof or provide evidence to the people of, uh, of desires and the people of went astray, the people of Abu Bidah, and to call them back to the truth, da'wah, to give them da'wah. And so, one thing is very important when we study anything in Islam, when we do anything in Islam, we have to have a correct intention. Our intention should be to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rabbil Alameen, Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, the one who created the heavens and earth and the only one who's worthy of worship. So we have to have our niyyah, our intention, uh, pure for the sake of Allah, that we're studying these things and we're exposing these faults. Lillah. Lillah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not for our desires, not to make our group of brothers and sisters in this corner and this masjid more popular or that they're the leaders of the da'wah or this one is this. No. But it's in order to come closer to Allah and protect the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu from deviation, from innovation. So, uh, and, and, and also to provide evidence to establish the proof that you, you've given the ayats, you've given the, uh, uh, the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu as evidence to show them, hey, this is the haq, leave that bid'ah, leave that dalal, and to call them back to the truth. So we should have an intention to call, we want ahl bid'ah, those people who have deviated in the Religion of Islam, we want them to come back. We don't want them. Who, do you want anyone to go to the hellfire? Of course not. Of course not, if you're being pure, because that can happen to any of us. As the Prophet said, one of you could be an arm span length from uh, paradise and then do the deeds of the fire, what was written over, uh, what was written for him will overtake him, and then do the deeds of the hellfire and end up in the fire. 
So none of us knows how we're going to live, how we're going to end in this life. So we, it's very important for us to never be arrogant, never be like those people who think they're, they're saved from the fire and, and they're protected uh, from, from the fire, or that we're only going to be in the fire for a little bit, as uh, some of the earlier nations said. And we'll find this all in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala mentions about those people who believe uh, that they would only be in the fire just for a little bit of time. So they changed the book and they distorted the message that Allah gave them to give to their people, that their prophets were sent with. So going back to the, the main point is that the second reason for studying groups and sects is to establish the proof, you know, provide evidence to them and about their deviation and to call them back to the truth. So we want the people of misguidance, whether it be any of the Sufi sects, whether it be the Jamaat al-Ahbash, or any other groups or sects, especially if they're inside the fold of Islam, they are deviant, but they're in the fold of Islam, we want them to come back. And of course, we want to invite non-Muslims to Islam. That's a part of our job as, uh, as Muslims, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us that fadila, that great, that greatness over and preferred us over mankind and given us guidance, not because of our race, not because of our language, not because of our culture, not because of this, but because we are united based on worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone the Quran, and in accordance with the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the divine speech, the Quran, Kitabillah, wa sunnah of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The third reason that uh, for uh, studying uh, groups and sects, and you know, the Hizbi and, 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 and the various uh, Various jama'at that we have in this time, the Quran Muslimin, Jama'at al Tabliq, Jama'at al Takfir wa Hijra, uh, you know, Suriyun, uh, all these various groups, the Hadadiyya, and all these other groups that are claiming to follow the Sunnah of the Prophet, وسلم, but have deviated in different issues of creed or in methodology or minhaj. Why should we study them? Why should we care? Well, the third reason is, Li Nahmi ad Deen. Aqidatin wa shariatin min nisbati dhalik al bid'ah ilayh wa nahdhar al muslimin minha. So the third reason is that we need to study these groups and sects in order to preserve the religion of Islam in its aqidah, its belief, its creed, and in the sharia, and in the practice of it, whether it be the salat, all the way to uh, the prescribed, uh, the Islamic law. All of these things make up the Sharia, so, and it all must be preserved in accordance with the Quran and the Sunnah and the understanding of the Salaf al So, by studying the groups and sects that we, and their deviation, we are, by studying it, it helps us to know their mistakes and their deviation in order to protect and preserve the pristine Islam, to protect Islam from those various new creeds and those various new menahij or, or methodologies and to protect the religion from those things being associated, those deviations being associated to Islam and in order to warn the, our Muslim brothers and sisters from the deviations. And so that is, a, it's preserving the religion of Islam. That's the third reason. And then the final reason, the fourth reason that uh, for, uh, for that which, which is the fourth reason that we uh, should study these groups and sects is that in order to be able to make a hukum or a ruling, a correct and a just and sound ruling upon a particular group or sect or jamaat, uh, that can only happen uh, by studying them, studying their, who are their main, uh, their leaders, studying their scholars, and studying their most important books that they wrote uh, in accordance with that creed of Minhaj. And so we ask Allah to the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us to uh, 
preserve the Quran and preserve the Sunnah of the Prophet and be aware of these groups and sects in order to help preserve the religion of Islam. And to recap that, firstly, it's warning against the evil. Secondly, providing evidence and doubt. Thirdly, preserving the religion. And fourthly, to be just and correct in ruling upon a particular group or sect. And we have to do that for the sake of Allah.